everyone, this is Jem from Scrapping Posh, and I am here today with a CoBeads project, and that's CoBeads.com. And um, a couple months ago, I got my package, and they have requested that I do some videos, and um, Christmas came and all that stuff, so now I'm just uh, catching up a little bit. So, I had purchased some of the miscellaneous bead packages, so... Um, wanted to go through those. I went through them in the little haul that I did, but we are going to be making some items. So it's really neat within these little packets. You can, there's um, lots of different things. So there's like Christmas ornament or Christmas ones. So that's a Santa and a snowman. I'm not going to do those. They would have been great to do at Christmas time. That's a Santa. But there's also some other ones. There's a little angel. Mm -hmm another different kind um this one i think that is like maybe a back of a doll there's a heart so i got three packages of these and um these were like less than a dollar i want to say for a pack of these so um it's a really great deal and we can definitely use them. That's, uh, that's like a wreath, but it's not a Christmas wreath. So what I thought I would do were, is, you know, go through and find the items that I may want to use. And I have this paper from uh, Artistic Studio Creations that I have already done an album out of, and I thought I'd make some cards. So just some simple cards, but I'll show you how to use beads on those cards. So I think I'm going to do a mask, and we can make them all a little different. I have a heart here. Here's a different heart. Um, let's see. There's some do um, Yeah, we can do one of the dolphins. That's another Christmas. A Christmas. Um, I have another cat heart. And I got another one here. So yeah, definitely worthwhile. Um, you don't know what you're going to get, but it seems like uh, it has a good combination of them. I'm separating out the Christmas ones because I'm going to put those made for an angel. That's perfect. Okay, we'll just we'll stick with those. We'll make some cards and we are going to make them super simple show you how to add beads to your cards and if you use the flat ones then you don't have to worry about like extra shipping and stuff like that. Just gonna put these up real quick because I still have a kitten in here who likes to push everything off my table. There are things that are missing that I'm going to have to go scavenging for that fell behind my my desk. So that's no fun, but I suppose you'll have that. She'll be moving here pretty soon uh, to a different room. Okay, so the first thing you do to make your cards is pick some cardstock, or you can buy the pre-made cards, uh, especially after Christmas, they're, uh, they're on sale. Um, let's do, I'm gonna take three sheets of this maroon, and I'm gonna cut it in half on the 11 inch side, so at uh, five and a half inches. And then I'm going to take um, a lighter color paper. We're going to put this on the inside. So I'm going to use a bone folder, but you don't have to. And essentially you can use any hard item that you can. A ruler works. Um, if I can find my bone folder, remember what I said about the kitten? Oh, no, there, there's at least one of them. Okay. I have a bone folder. This is going to help. 
sorry if you can hear the dogs. Um, there's some activity outside. And the dogs like to bark at everything. Because that's what they're made to do. They're great Pyrenees. However, the youngest dog, the one that is a terror to me, <laughs> is going to training in less than a month. I'm super excited because honestly I haven't got a decent night's sleep in that long. Okay. I had to, had to quiet the dog so if I have to cut that part out I'll just repeat myself and say that um, you just fold these over and then crease them. I'm using a bone folder. These are super simple cards. And you can also, if you buy, if you don't want to buy the pre-made card, just let's say you're like me and you just have like this excess amount of 8.5 by 11 sheets of cardstock, then you can buy just the envelopes, which is typically what I do. I have enough envelopes now that I probably don't have to. And in a pinch, I have the We Are Memory Keepers like envelope punch board. Okay. So your standard size little, I think it's an A5 card, is four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the eight and a half by half of the eight and a half by eleven folded in half. So um, four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to cut these inside papers at. We'll do. Um, let's do four and an eighth which is an eighth inch smaller by five and three eighths. So an eighth inch smaller on both sides. These are just going to be little panels to put on the inside. If I used a lighter cardstock, I wouldn't have to do this. Some of my cardstock has uh, crinkles in it. They've been sitting for a while and moved around quite a bit. So I'm cutting off the, the sides that are no good. So um, I really encourage you to head over to cobeads.com. They have so much stuff. It's such a great assortment. And their clearance items are just crazy inexpensive. Okay. So there is that. I'm going to put these aside and then we're going to pick some images. Um, the cut aparts for the collection seem a bit big. So let's do, I have these scraps of paper and we can definitely use those, or at least some of them. And again, these are going to be five and three eighths by four and an eighth. And it's a perfect way to use your scraps and six by six paper pads. Because I don't know about you, but once I make a couple albums out of stuff, out of stuff, <laughs> I think I cut that wrong. I was talking. Once I make a couple albums out of um, a paper pad, I kind of, 
I get to the point where I definitely don't want to throw it away, but on the other hand, I don't really want to make another album out of it. Like, I already made an album out of it. I love these balloons. And then always save, this is the 6x6, six six, uh, this was a, um, let me move some stuff around. This was a scrap and this is the 6x6, six six. so I'm keeping the drops from the 6x6 six six over there. Four, uh, five. One, two, three, four, five. How many cards did I make? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna pick another bead. I can make six. Um, you know what? I'll just do one without bead. It's fine. So there's four. I need two more. Oh, that one's big enough. This is actually a part of the cover. So, that's exciting <laughs> to get the most out of your paper. And, I mean, you can make so many cards. I have videos that I just make cards out of all my scraps. Uh, I wouldn't cut up a new paper pad just to make cards. This one's a little too big still. Uh, but they, there are, um, like, cut parts. There's like this entire paper pad. Let's see. We'll do. Okay. I think that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm going to put. This, these are the off cuts. And then, of course, if you have any little snippets that were too small you can still use those too but I think we may use a couple of these here or at least parts of them because I think they're awesome let's get a hole punch okay I have this um, giant EK success one and a half inch punch and I'm just going to punch out the inside of this clock. Um, I think I'll punch out part of this balloon, um, the train, and I like this um, bug here. And how many did I just do? One, two, three. Um, let's get a different shape. I have this two and an eight inch gigantic, or no. Yeah, it's a two and an eighth inch. They measure them, okay, let me tell you something about square punches. For some reason, they measure the circle that it fits in and then call it that. So. This is three inches diagonally, kind of like they measure TVs, but it's actually a two and eighth inch punch. So, And I told you guys this is super simple. I want this bug too. What's a B? Okay. That should be enough. So we still have plenty of paper. Make millions of different things. Maybe not millions. Okay. Now. We're done with cutting, we're done with punching. 
and all we need is scissors, ribbon, glue, and maybe some foam squares. I have just a couple here, and that'll be enough. I don't have to pop everything up. Okay. Now, you can use the glue of your choice to adhere the hardest part is deciding what side of the paper to use. So you obviously adhere the side you're not going to use. Let me zoom you out a little bit. Cut a piece of ribbon. This has been terrorized by the kitten. Okay, that piece is not going on my card. I just use the glue that I just put on there and wrap it around. There we go. It's, this is a card. It's not going to be opened and closed and pulled. Oh. I do want it to be straight though. But since we are going to put a charm on it, we want just a little bit more heavy duty. So I'm gonna get some score tape because okay. Just got some quarter inch score tape. Oh you know what? I know where my score tape is. There it is. Got some quarter inch score tape. We're just going to put it over the ribbon and that's just the extra adhesive just for the ribbon. Make sure you put it on the right side so the card opens on the right. If that's where you want it to open. Okay and then let's do I think I want to put a strip of the design that was on the other side right down the middle. So I lied about not needing my cutter because I want to cut this at five and three eighths. Okay. And then of course the paper is going to coordinate because this is the back side. And I just leave I don't know, about three eighths of an inch over on that other side. And then let's use the bug. I'm going to pop him up. And I'm going to put him just a tiny bit over the ribbon. And then the fun part is adding the charm and I'm just going to use these garment pens. This is one of the ways you can do it. I'll show you another way. This is just a black garment pen. You can match it to your bead, an antique or whatever. And then you can either put it through the ribbon or around the ribbon. Super cute. Um, if you don't like the top of that, you can hide it underneath this little bug. And that's not going to add enough bulk to your card to like require extra shipping. Um, for USPS anyways, it has to be over a quarter inch thick to require extra shipping. So just an FYI. Then we're going to take this uh, different color stick a uh, cardstock and not only does this give you a place to write but it also stiffens the card up a little bit so even if you use a light 
cardstock, you may consider putting this in. The other thing this can do is you can put your uh, stamp your sentiment here, and if you mess it up, all you have to do is like flip it over. <laughs> so there's one. You can also add a sentiment there. I typically don't. I just because I don't know what the card's going to be for. Okay. So way number two. So I like this one long ways because I think the pattern just goes that way. So let's cut here. Kind of excited because even though uh, I tell myself that I'm only going to get Chipotle on Thursdays and only if I lose weight because Thursdays is my weigh-in day. Uh, I decided that I've been really good today and that I should get one tonight. So as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to Chipotle. Super, super excited. Oh, I did it wrong. I said I was going to show you the other way to do it, and then I started thinking about Chipotle. Okay. The other way to do it is to add the charm right here. Now, this can be tricky because you have to thread the charm, or yeah, you have to thread the charm over the ribbon, which can be thick. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can use a ribbon as like a needle threader. Or not a ribbon, a, a piece of thread as a needle threader. Done that plenty of times. It's like it's the same as like getting them through, getting yarn through a uh, eyelet. But once you get one piece through, it's pretty easy. Okay. So there we go. Now, when you do this, you make sure that the it, the uh, charm is facing the right way. I'm sorry if I keep saying, uh, I hate it when people do that. <laughs> uh, don't turn me off. So there's an angel on one side, and it says made for an angel on the other. So that's neat. You just pull it taut, tight, taut. There you go. And now I'm going to reinforce it with the score tape. It doesn't matter what the back looks like. Those aren't even because they don't have to be. The nice thing about these beads is that they're inexpensive. So even though like, I know I don't really care to do cards because people just throw them away anyways, I think. Uh, so, like, you don't want to put beads and expensive things on cards, but these are not too expensive to do that with. Um, I'm just going to put this clock one here. And we just put that one flat. If you want, this has a flat back, you can glue it down, but it has a cute saying on the back, so it'll settle itself down after a minute or, you know, after sitting for a little while. And then the inside. And if you care to decorate the inside with something besides the sentiment, um, I always keep my scrap papers for that. Uh, like little balloon. Let's just go ahead and stick him in the inside over here. Because it makes the inside happy. Okay. So there's the second way to hold down the, one of those charms on a ribbon. Let's see if I can think of a third way while I put this together. I kind of like the pink with the maroon. I 
pickles a long ways again. And of course, you can use any ribbon you want. Let's do it this way anyways. Okay. Which one am I using? I can use the mask. Well, you can always use an O-ring. Or a... I don't call them O-rings. Um, a... Uh, wow, I'm brain dead right now. I'm going to use this because I don't want it to fall all the way down to the bottom. And it's just the same as the first one, the little garment pen. You can use garment pens, you can use just regular safety pens, it's fine. I think I put that one on backwards though. garment pins, jump rings, that's what I wanted to say. Jump rings. So I have two left, two hearts. a jump ring sitting right here on the desk in my little mm, how about that's too much how about these clocks right down the middle I like that Ooh, I like the back of this also Ooh. But I like the clocks because that's just a pattern. Add some interest with this. <clears throat> we'll put it higher up. And since there's a whole bunch of clocks, let's go ahead. We'll put it right in the middle and we'll pop that one up too. Um, I use two pops. Okay, pop him up right in the middle, wait, 12 on top, there we go, there's another one, okay, oh, step right the inside, I always tape, this is textured cardstock, which when I bought it, it was super cheap and on sale and I didn't pay attention because I don't particularly care for texture cardstock in my mini albums. So, uh, when I glue this down, I glue it texture side down. And then let's just take a piece of this like scrap and, oh, you know what? I have even smaller scraps that I cut off of the 5 and 3 8 side. Let's use that. Like, we can just cut a strip off to decorate this. Use all the paper. I'm gonna, I didn't cut it straight, so. There we go. Now it's straight. And you can. Isn't that cute? You can stamp it on the back like handmade. Okay, let's see. I got... I like this one. We we're going to look for jump rings. I'll show you how to use the jump rings. I don't have the... Do I have them? have this little chain. We could use that too. Should I? You want to do a chain one? What the hey? 
Let's do it. Where are my tools? They're up there. Okay. As long as I know where my tools are, we can make it happen. Sorry if I, I'm not on camera, you guys. This is my miscellaneous drawer. Everybody has one. Don't laugh at me. We'll do a different video with some beads in it. Flowers would be cute to add to these cards. I'm trying to keep them flat, so. Okay, that's good enough. So let's do, let's do the clock one. And instead of using the ribbon, let's use a chain. How fun is that? So I'm going to cut him off right here with a uh, snipper tool. These are just wire cutters. I didn't buy the crafty ones. Uh, you can glue this with like glossy accents or E6000. I'm going to try the tape because I'm confident in score tape. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich it. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the bottom. tape on top. I'm going to run the chain I don't think I left enough chain. I can always piece it back together but that sounds like too much work. Okay here we go. Okay, now I gotta make sure it's straight again. The easiest way to make sure this is straight is just hold it straight and then tuck it under. Because gravity is gonna make it go straight down. Alright. A little extra tape on him because he's bulky. Isn't this fun? How fun would it be to get the car a card with a chain on it? <laughs> I don't know. I think it would be cool. I'd be like, oh wow. But small things. Um <clears throat> amuse me. Alright, here we go. I think my clocks are upside down. No, they're not. Okay, we're good. My paper. <clears throat> it's not exactly straight, but that's okay. Let's see. What kind of... That's too bright. Nope, I don't like that either. Uh, let's put the charm on and then decide. So I'm going to use a jump ring because we're using chain and if I was ambitious enough I would go get a antique color chain. But we're just going to use this gold. Now, word to the wise, do not use your thumbnail to open the jump rings because it may be okay at first, but after a while, your thumbnail will have permanent damage. <laughs> Mine did anyways. 
I don't know if that's just me. Lack of vitamins and minerals. The cool thing about this is you can put it wherever you want and the jump ring just goes through the chain just like you were just like I do the um, tassels and stuff which there's lots of videos on tassels and then you just make sure you close the jump ring all the way back Okay, let's try that one again. No gaps, because if your gap is any bigger than the chain or the charm, it will fall off. Right. I like it. And what you say, what say you this bumblebee? I think so. I'm going to put a bumblebee and then maybe after I get him on, I think of something else. I'm sliding him under the chain and then how about, no that's too much. I think it'll just be too much. Let's put, let's go ahead and let's call him done. If you had a sentiment here, it would, it would be a little more balanced. But I still like it. I like it the way it is. These charms are double-sided. Ha! Wonderful. Great idea, guys. Okay. The reason why I say that is a double-sided charm is never on incorrectly. in here and then I'm going to use this I don't, this blue is beautiful but it's just not going with my maroon I think and again I'm just going to butt it right up against the side of the card and since I only have one more card to do or I guess I got two cards to do don't I I don't know you can always add uh, one of these little. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put this little block in here. There. All right. And then, since I used my last cut apart, that might be it. I got. I gotta use the balloons because I really like the balloons. How should we hold the next one on? I have an idea. Okay. I'm going to take the chain. <clears throat> I'm going to put the heart on the chain. With the jump ring. And of course, Kobe's has jump rings. And we're going to dangle it, you guys. I am going to find a brad for all you paper crafters. You know you have brads. I have a little square one. Oh, here. Here's a metal, metal one. I have this little tiny one. Oh, that would be kind of cute because it looks, yeah, it's the same color and it looks like a... Uh, A nail. Oh no, a screw. A nail would look plain. Okay, so now let's go ahead and 
see. Oh yeah, okay. So let's let him hang. I just want him to hang right here. So we'll cut him off there. I did not need to put the glue on the card yet. It's making it very hard. So don't glue it or don't adhere it until after you have this in here. I'm just going to take this tiny brad and put it right through the chain. Now, if you use a bigger brad and it doesn't fit through the chain, use another jump ring. Or maybe you have like a really tiny chain. <clears throat> okay. And I know for a fact I will not be able to put that brad through this paper because it's pretty thick paper. So let's hang it on the left side. And that hole is way too big for that tiny brad. Tiny hole. Um, I'm going to have to cover that now. I'm going to have to put my image there now. So little tiny hole. I got... There, that's better. I got glue on my awl. I think it's an awl. No, nope, that's too... Dang it. Okay, let's use my head. Let's use a needle. Okay, here we go. Needle. I'll go up a little higher. Let the brad through my hole. Thread the brad through my hole. I think anybody would be super thrilled to get one of these cards. A card with metal on it is definitely a winner. Okay. Just gonna twist my little brad. I'm gonna push it down so I can get it as flat as possible. Same thing with this brad. Um, if you want to like glue it down with some E6000 or something, feel free to do so. And there we go. Now, isn't that neat? Okay, I have a couple holes to cover. So let's just run this right there. People are gonna think that I did it on purpose just to <laughs> just so you can see the chain better. I am gonna leave a little bit of room here so you see a peak. paper on the other side and then let's see what do I want to put should I put this there a little train it kind of doesn't have anything to do with the balloons let's grab do I have a balloon oh yeah I have several balloons how about I just cut, this has lines, let's just cut square out. Follow the lines, there's no line this way though. Well, yeah, I'll use this one. You gotta love beautiful paper. Like, you don't have to do anything to it and it's just ready. Uh, I am going to cut off this is waiting because it makes no sense without the adventure. But I can use the other side of it. You can distress this. I'm not going to. <clears throat> but I am going to take this is waiting. <clears throat> I'm going to use it to offset. Add some interest. 
Look at that. Isn't that cute? I'm impressed. I like it. And I glued it on the card the wrong direction. Of course I did. Remember when I said make sure you glue it the right way? Okay. Not ruining this card. So now we don't have to make that last card that doesn't have a bead. Because I am cutting this bad boy off and gluing it on the card in front. Make some straight edges with my paper trimmer. told you how much I love my what the heck is this thing cutter pillar it's awesome okay there we go back in business make sure it opens the right way this is going to be a super hefty card. There we go. I love it. Let's do the inside. like it to go off the right edge and not the left edge. I don't know why. I'm sure it's some kind of design thing. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's fine. I should have put it to go across the bottom since this is not a... That's okay. We'll put one across the bottom. We'll put this right here so it kind of gives a um, horizontal element there. Alright, what do you guys think? So, I'm going to clean some of this stuff up. Move, move. This is how I end up with stuff in my drunk car. Okay. So, super simple. Pretty quick, if I hadn't made some mistakes. Cards using beads. This one goes this way. Ribbon. And some chain. Not all at the same time. We got some garment pins here, which is super, super simple. Uh, these are hold on, held on by jump rings. So, um, let's see if we can get all these in the. Look at that. All right, you guys. So, um, head over to cobeats.com. I love their selection and the variety and their prices. So make sure you pick up something. Check out their clearance items and their low stock items. Uh, don't miss out on that. So I'll have another project with the Kobe's items. So stay tuned and I hope you have a wonderful night. Make these cards. Give them to your friends. They'll really like them. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.